Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, everybody. Hi, guys. Hi, welcome, rebroadcasters. I always say rebroadcasters. Welcome to those who are watching the rebroadcast. Takes longer to say that. And thanks to those who are joining me live. I am here to talk about what should really be a Halloween scope because this is scary, scary, scary stuff. So scary that we need to take it so seriously and make changes that are going to have an impact. We can't rely on everyone else and politicians and policies to change what's going on. We um, need to change what's going on in our own daily um, actions with our own behaviors. One of the things many of you have heard me say before is that you know, a lot of people ask me if when it comes to changing the way we eat and changing the way we live and changing the choices we make, um, do I really think that people can make a difference? And my answer is no. I don't believe that people can make a difference. I know that people do make a difference. Everything we do, everything we buy, everything we eat has an impact on someone or something else. We don't get to decide whether we can make a difference or not. We get to decide only if the difference we inevitably make is negative or positive. So we do make a difference. We just have to decide what kind of difference we want to make. Does that make sense? So that's ultimately the message here is that we have the power to make the difference uh, in the things we say we care about. So if you're just joining me, my name is Colleen Patrick Adro and my website is joyfulvegan.com and you can find all of my work there. I am an educator and author dedicated to empowering people to make the most informed food choices and to empowering people to live according to their own values of compassion and wellness. I always say that I'm not asking people to live according to my values. I'm really urging people to live according to their own. And I'm so grateful to be able to do this work and be able to provide this information and then see people make the changes in their daily lives um, based on the information they have because you know there's a there's a kind of a misconception that knowledge is power knowledge is not power unless we do something with that knowledge so first step is understanding and learning the information and the second step is actually doing something about it so here today I'm gonna to give you some information and I'm gonna give you some uh, some thoughts about what you can do about it so if you're just joining us for the first time I'd love to say hi so if you type in soy um, and your name um, if you're new um, I can say hi to you and I'd love to give you a shout out whether you're joining for the first time or not you can share this broadcast of course I think this is the most <laughs> important information to convey to people who say they care um, so you can share by clicking on the little person hello from San Francisco Tim Anderson you can click on the little person there um, and share this immediately with your Twitter followers Facebook followers and Periscope followers and of course if you're just joining us hi Andrea welcome Andrea or Andrea not sure how you pronounce it um, you can also follow me on Periscope so that you can be alerted to all of these scopes that we do on a daily basis and when I say we I mean I um, hi um, Campbell hi from Campbell hi from Campbell um, I'm not feeling well today. Your broadcast is healing. I'm glad. I haven't even gotten to the substance of the, <laughs> of the broadcast. We haven't even talked about what the topic is. So I'm also always interested in how you heard about the scope and why you're interested in the scope because the more, the better I can be at uh, titling them and getting them out there, um, the, the more people I can reach. So um, I'm going to get started, but do let me know if you were just scrolling through Periscope, if this was an interesting topic to you, if you heard about it from um, Twitter or Facebook. I'm just really curious because especially it's important for me to reach new people who, um, who've never heard of my work before and how you found out about these scopes. So, um, I have great titles with inks. I'm trying. <laughs> so of course there are so many misconceptions. You saw it on Facebook. Wonderful. The nerdy vegan, uh, I have not spoken about the problem. I'm about to speak about the problem right now. There are so many misconceptions about food, about, um, veganism, about animal rights. I mean, there's just so, so many misconceptions all the time. And we tend to scapegoat, uh, the things that, um, that are a little more, um, complicated in terms of what it means to us and for us. Wonderful. Thanks for letting me know everybody. So it sounds like you already follow me on Periscope if you got a notification. So one of the things that happens is, you know, there's a lot of, uh, 
good news about harmful things. And I think it's because people tend to recognize that change is hard, but they want to feel like they're doing something. So I think we're willing to do um, a little bit, enough that we feel like we're making a difference or having an impact, but that doesn't really inconvenience our lives too much. And of course, when it comes to what we eat, that's I see that a lot. And I see that a lot in terms of the food choices that people are making. They, they think they're making the most compassionate, the most uh, sustainable choices, but often they're not making the really the most impactful impactful choices when it comes to sustainability and compassion and ethics. Um, but they're doing as much as they can so that they can put a stamp on it and say, well, I'm doing this much. And really, they're not really having that much of an impact at all. And so um, when it comes to soy, it's one of those things, there's an immediate association between soy and veganism or vegetarianism. And of course, it is not a prerequisite for you to eat soy <laughs> if you are vegetarian or vegan. I happen to absolutely love soybeans and tofu and edamame and miso and tempeh and soy milk. But you you do not have to if you don't want to. You don't have to eat tofu if you don't want to. You don't have to. It's not like you have to go through that rite of passage and eat tofu before you become vegan. So, um, so you don't have to do that. And it's wonderful. It's a. It's you know these are wonderful foods that are hundreds of years old that are based on beans. And how wonderful to have such a versatile product. I was going to say that there are three problems with soy. One of which is how versatile soy is. There's so many things you can do with it, and it's so diverse and. It, you know, there's so many choices we have and that's a problem too. But of course, I really wanted to focus on the main problem with soy, which is not tofu, not tempeh, not miso, not soy milk, not what am I missing? Edamame, not soybeans, but the number one problem with soy is deforestation of the rainforest. And that is not an exaggeration. You can read the reports from the World Bank, you can read the reports from uh, the UN. Uh, these are really, really scary things we're talking about because we're talking about incredible destruction of the rainforest and it is specifically to clear the rainforest for grazing land for cattle, which is, which who are raised for, um, you know, raised and kept and killed for human consumption. A very temporary thing, a very fleeting pleasure, uh, if, if you consider it a pleasure for, um, for, for what? I mean, the, the costs certainly outweigh the benefits in my opinion and um, it's also to grow feed crops so soy is the number one um, feed crop that is fed to uh, animals who are raised and kept and killed for human consumption soybeans it's cheap it's high protein and it's cheap and so that is the number one problem with soy tofu is not the problem the rainforests that are being cut down in Brazil and in South America are being cut down um, for grazing land for cattle and for feed crops for, for cattle and for other livestock. Uh, not tofu. They are not cutting the rainforest down for tofu. They're not cutting the rainforest down for miso, okay? Most of the tofu, most of the beans that uh, our tofu was made from, especially I'm speaking from the United States, but even in Western countries when we're talking about tofu, most of them, and again, in the case of the United States, are grown in the United States. Most of the soy crops are grown in the United States for human consumption. But when we're talking about where most of the crops are grown for animal consumption, it's South America. It's the rainforest. And the numbers are staggering. I mean, if you take a look at the numbers, I mean, we're talking about animal agriculture being responsible for 91% of Amazon destruction and that's a World Bank number. So uh, we're talking about a huge destruction and this is really helpful for anybody who's who's still consuming animals to know because not everybody knows this and I don't walk around saying how could you do what you're doing because you should know this. You don't know it fine, now you do and you can make a difference and you can make a change. For those who are already vegetarian, for those who are already vegan, this is really helpful information to be able to convey to people who make excuses or who are interested in, in not consuming animals and people who brought, bring up questions about soy. This is so important to talk about when people ask questions about soy because everybody does. So when you look at the numbers, we're talking about um, a staggering number of m millions of hectares that are being cut down um, in the rainforest for animal um, for animal feed and for animal um, grazing. Yeah, knowledge is power only if you do something with it. Knowledge means nothing if we don't do anything with it. Great, I have knowledge. Great, I know that the rainforests are being cut down, but unless I do something with that knowledge, which is action, then it means absolutely nothing. So take this knowledge, which is powerful, and use it to, uh, to make a difference in your own behavior. Remember, it's not that we can make a difference, it's that we do make a difference. Every thing we do has an impact. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? That's right. It's not a problem consuming soy products. The problem is meat and, and, and all livestock products, but it's mostly meat in this case. Um, 
uh, because th that's what's being fed to um, to the animals who are being raised for human consumption. And then, of course, absolutely, for those of you who are interested in more information about this, please do go watch Cowspiracy, a documentary made about the environmental effects of the animal agriculture industry and the environmental organizations who are not talking about this. So why are the environmental organizations not talking about this? Why? Cowspiracy confronts the, uh, the environmental organizations it can get a hold of and asks this question. I'll, I'll answer my, the question myself and I'll tell you my opinion about why I think the environmental organizations are not um, talking about it. First, I just wanted to say hi everybody. Thank you for joining us and you can share this at any time, at any moment. Um, by clicking on the little person there and um, you get a notification where you can share those with your Periscope or Twitter or Facebook followers. You can swipe up on your Android, you can swipe left to right on your iPhone. And so um, we're here talking about what the number one problem is um, about soy and the number one problem is that we're cutting the rainforest down for animal agriculture. There's just no other way around it. There's nothing else to say about it. Um, tofu isn't the problem, miso isn't the problem, tempeh, soy milk is not the problem. And yet those are the questions that people ask when they're asking about soy. Soy is constantly getting a bad rap and it should when it comes to the soy crops that are being, uh, uh, being grown for uh, animal agriculture. The idea that we go through the animals to get to the nutrients that the animals get because the animals eat plants makes absolutely no sense and it's incredibly destructive as you can see. The costs of cheap meat are so incredibly high. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, you can tap on your screen and give little hearts. I did didn't make Halloween the hashtag. If I did make Halloween the hashtag, then you would have seen little bats flying up as well. But um, <laughs> but I could have made Halloween the hashtag because this is scary, scary stuff. That's why I made hashtag scary the hashtag. <laughs> So the production, that's right, soy, soybeans are fine in terms of human consumption of soybeans and tofu and tempeh, etc. But we're, if we don't want to contribute to rainforest being cut down, then we absolutely have to uh, not consume animals. I mean, it's really that simple. It's not that complicated. You need to work on explaining that with people, the actual cost of cheap meat. Absolutely. And you can just list the, the, the high cost of cheap meat. You know, because when we think about costs, we automatically tend to think of money when we think of the cost of our um, food. But it's not just money. There are so many costs involved in the decisions we make and the choices we make when it comes to what we eat. There are costs to the environment. There are costs to our health. There are costs to our own spirits, there are costs to the animals, those are costs that we have to consider that are huge. And they are monetary, like they do, they are related to money, but we just don't see it directly. We think, oh, the money connection is just the, the dollar that we take out of our pocket and pay for that th product. So we pay 99 cents for a bucket of chicken wings. We think that's, you know, oh, okay, I didn't pay a lot of money. But the cost, it did not actually cost 99 cents to produce that crap. It The, the cost to the environment and to the people living near these factory farms and to our health. And then, of course, there's all of the, the money that it costs to take care of the heart disease that's related to the consumption of animal products. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. On. So just list five things when you're talking about the high cost of cheap meat and uh, and that's how you can talk about these things with people. We have to get away from this idea that there's something so valuable in not paying a lot of dollars for what we eat. We have to have some foresight. We have to have some uh, big picture perspective. We can't constantly be myopic. Every time we're myopic, we, this is how we make these horrible decisions and this is how there's so much destruction. Um, but like anything, it's important not to overdo it. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I am because you guys are having conversations that I was not privy to because I was talking about the high cost of cheap meat. So if you have any questions, please, I am happy to answer them. Um, this is your time to ans ask a few questions and I will answer them. Um, but uh, if you want more information about this, of course, you can go to joyfulvegan.com anytime. You can please go to cowspiracy.com and watch Cowspiracy. And then after you have been moved by this information, take the 30 day vegan challenge. You can take it through my book, which is on Amazon. Um, you can also, um, take it, you know, through the online program. I remember my teacher saying soccer balls are so cheap from human exploitation. Sure. I mean, like, I mean, our clothing, I mean, we pay so little for clothing because of, you know, high volume. I mean, that's one of the, I mean, one of the good things is that we can produce a lot of things very quickly in the sense that good in the sense that, you know, we have a lot of people to serve. Um, but then when you start, um, you know, 
for a business, for any business, whether it's the animal um, agriculture industry or any business, the clothing industry, they're always going to measure profits and losses. Like that's all, that's all that they're going to do. So they're going to constantly weigh, how can I produce the most amount and make the most and put as little uh, into it as possible. That's ultimately what's going to be done. And we have to decide who we want to support when we do spend our dollars. And that's why, you know, labels are important, but making sure that we're really asking the questions what's behind those labels so that we know when we're buying something fair trade, does it really mean something? Of course, a lot of people think when they buy something that's humanely raised, it means something, but it doesn't. And I really encourage people to go look behind the labels. We'll talk about that in another scope another time. And of course, I talk about it in, um, in my podcast, Food for Thought, and in many other, many other mediums um, of mine. Um, that's how most of my family is. It's hard to get through to them, says Mario. Phytoestrogen still needs further explanation for some. Chickpea, um, I do talk about um, phytoestrogen in the video that I did on soy. There's a two-parter in my YouTube channel, a Joyful Vegan YouTube. Look for Joyful Vegan. I have two-parter on soy, and I do talk about phytoestrogen. It's very simple. Phytoestrogens are plant estrogens, and they're very healthful, and they don't create estrogen in our body. It's just a big misconception about what phytoestrogens are. They change activity in our body because they're so close to our own estrogens, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually reducing breast cancer, breast cancer risk because of the healthful properties of the phytoestrogens. So go watch the videos and you can learn more about that. And I explain it in a way that I think is pretty helpful for people to understand what phytoestrogens mean. Does that make sense? My boyfriend is being so stupid about soy and hormones. Tell him to watch the video, Brittany. Um, thanks. Someone else asked the, um, thought it worth repeating. Yeah, for sure. So um, definitely go check out the video, Chickpea, and or it sounds like you already have, um, but for those who are asking, go check out Joyful Vegan's um, channel, that's me, on YouTube. And um, the videos are called, I think it's something like, I don't know, soy is not evil. Soy is just a bean. Okay. It's just a bean. Your soy video series was super helpful. So many misconceptions. Good, good. I'm so glad, Sarah. That's the whole reason I do all of this is to demystify this. If one person can then understand it differently and then they pass it on to the people who are in their lives, that's, you know, that just makes my life worth living. Soy 2 um, Parter is great, really informative. Fantastic. Your podcast episode on meat and masculinity was helpful to me about soy and hormones. Good. I'm so glad. Yeah, yeah. That's really fantastic. Um, for those who are interested, you can watch my, uh, listen to my meat and masculinity podcast over at Food for Thought. So thank you for joining me, everybody. Thanks for your hearts. I'm always so grateful for your hearts and your love and support and for your shares. And of course, we're having a contest for hearts from for those who are sending the most hearts between now and October 31st, which is Halloween. Um, you'll be getting a gift from me. And so I can track all of the hearts and all of the shares in uh, my stats. So thank you for your shares. Your shares are so important to me. I'm hearing like little critters below me. I'm not sure who they are. Um, your shares are so important because I can only do so much in terms of getting this out there. All of this is dependent on word of mouth. Heard a breast cancer surgeon talk about this recently. Um, Christy Funk. Okay, fantastic. I'll check it out. Could be a badger. <laughs> not here, Tim. Not here. Not here in California. Elsewhere in the world. There are no badgers here. I think, I think they're birds. They just wind up sounding so loud. The podcast is awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Lean Green Girl. So do you guys have any other questions for me before I close and go get some lunch, which may consist of tofu, I believe. I heard the hearts cap out at 200 per person or something. I know, but then, I mean, I look at my stats and I can see one person sends like 1,500 hearts. It's supposed to be 500 hearts cap, but I really see uh, a lot more than that per person. Um, but don't forget, it's going to be a, it's going to be cumulative. So if you can, um, if you're giving hearts, it adds up um, every day between now and the 31st. Podcast is full of great enforcement to stay strong. The joyful vegan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any ideas for frozen tofu? Yeah, frozen tofu is the best. Frozen tofu is my favorite. Do you guys want to hear about frozen tofu before we go, since it's related to soy? What will I have for lunch? I actually have a field roast burger and I cut up some carrots. I'm going to have that and I have um, some kale. I'm going to have a little kale salad, but I have a delicious, amazing field roast uh, hand formed burger, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite. Is tempeh the healthiest form? Okay. You guys want to hear about frozen tofu and is tempeh the healthiest form? Um, 
Um, you know you're not because you're, you're hungry. For lunch, I made um, chick salad with Beyond Meat um, strips. Wonderful. Tips for frying tofu. Okay, I'll give you that too. And miso is, I think. Okay, so I will tell you what I think. So um, in terms of frozen tofu, freeze tofu by putting the whole tub of tofu with water, you know, all in the water and everything in your freezer. Freeze it for at least 24 hours. Take it out. Thaw it on the counter. And once it's thawed for at least, you know, I don't know, once it's thawed, it takes a few hours to thaw, then you can squeeze out all the water and you change the texture of the tofu. So you get this really chewy tofu that's also very porous. You can uh, put a marinade in it and it soaks up whatever marinade you put in it. Um, from there, you can make whatever you want. From there, you can crumble it into uh, pasta sauce. You can crumble it into chili. You can um, fry it up and just have it part of a saute. The only thing I don't do with frozen tofu, to be honest, the only thing I don't do with frozen tofu um, is make like a tofu scramble because it's just chewier when I think of a scramble texture I want it to be a little wetter not not chewy so that's my favorite um, frozen tofu is my absolute favorite and of course I do talk about it in my podcast and in videos um, in terms of what's the healthiest it's really a matter remember we talk about it, and of course I have a video on this too remember we talk about the spectrum of uh, processed foods that as soon as you take a blueberry off the bush and put it in the freezer you're processing that blueberry as soon as you take a banana and you cut it up you're processing that banana so we need to talk about a spectrum of processed foods and so the, the, the least processed um, the better in terms of the healthfulness of that food because you're getting all of the nutrients nutrients and components and um, fiber of that food. But as you start to go down the spectrum, you're starting to just, you know, go down the spectrum of process. Not horrible, but like, you know, some are better than others. So tempeh is, tempeh is healthier in the sense that it's less processed, in the sense that it's whole soybeans that are just fermented with a grain, like rice. So tempeh, you're not doing anything to the to the soybeans other than um, fermenting them. Um, when you get into soy milk, you boil the soybeans. Okay, fine, so you make a milk. That's not terrible, it's not a bad thing, good. Um, and then when you make tofu, you take that milk and you add a coagulant and you make tofu. So it's all um, a matter of a spectrum. Sure, fermented foods are great, but that doesn't mean only fermented foods are great, right? Like. Fermented, fermented foods are great. Um, miso, tempeh, um, natto are great. But um, that doesn't mean like that non-fermented foods are bad. So if you want some um, fermented foods, that's that's great. There's going to be some other nutrients that you're going to get on there. But, um, but, you know, like that doesn't mean you can't not have tofu that you should only have tempeh. Does that make sense? How do you keep your kitchen clean when you're cooking? I clean as I go along. Definitely clean as you go along. That is the secret to keeping your kitchen clean. Uh, um, natto is a soy-based food that is fermented um, soy. I don't really like natto. It's got this kind of gelatinous, kind of foamy texture. The texture really bothers me. And it's, you find natto in like Japanese restaurants. You won't really see a lot of it in standard restaurants. Same tip your mom has for cleaning. Well, that's a very good tip. You should always clean up as you're going along. Did I answer all the questions about um, tempeh and tofu? Yeah, I don't like natto at all. There's just like the texture is just really, really scary, really scary for me. So um, you're having avocado and tofu rolls right now. Oh, I'm jealous. That sounds really good, cow hugger. Yummy, yummy, yum, yum. I am probably going to have some lunch and then I'm going to head out and go do some work outside of the house because believe it or not, I get distracted being in my own house and... Um, I, I really need to get out of the house and work more. Um, the podcast every morning educates me and keeps me going. I'm so glad. Someone asked about the number one problem with soy. Um, please do watch the rebroadcast. The number one problem with soy is animal agriculture because um, the rainforests being cut down in South America are being cut down to create grazing land for cattle and feed um, for cattle. Soy is the number one f uh, f um, crop feed of cattle and livestock. And, um, sorry, excuse me. Um, and, uh, uh, I got distracted. And that is the number one problem with soy. Yeah, it's not tofu. It's not tempeh. It's not any of the soy foods that we're eating directly. Most of those crops are grown in the United States. They are not the crops that are being cut down, uh, that are cutting down the rainforest. The crops that are cutting down the rainforest are uh, crops that are being grown for livestock. So why are we going through the middle animal? Why are we going through the animal? Why are we destroying the rainforest? Even if, my God, I mean, even if it wasn't about, I mean, it's, it's a nutrients we don't need to go through the animal to get to the nutrients because the reason the animals have the nutrients at all is because they ate plants. But we're talking about like this fleeting pleasure of a hamburger for cutting down the rainforest. We're talking about a permanent destruction of this ancient forest that we depend on, that local people depend on, that animals depend 
depend on, that ecosystems depend on, that we depend on through the, um, through um, the greenhouse gases that are being released into the air because we're not we don't have the trees to protect us. I mean, we're talking about serious serious consequences for a hamburger. Is it worth it? That is the question I would put to you, to all of you, to anybody anybody who's watching and I know we have a lot of like-minded people already watching but please encourage them to watch this because it's because that's the question like, is it worth it is it really worth it to be destroying this this uh, the you know basically the lungs of the world the lungs of the world for a hamburger is it worth it I don't think people understand that one person can make a difference and I don't understand I don't think people understand that they do make a difference that they're just they're not like they're having a negative difference they're making a negative difference they're having a negative impact so thank you for listening guys I know you're all on board you're all on board so let's try to get this information into um, you know into the hearts and minds of people who may not be aware of this okay so help me get this out um, to people and um, I need your help to do that will you help me do that Thanks, Allie, for your blue hearts. Thanks, everybody, for your hearts. Will you help me do that, guys? Will you help me get the word out? Please. I need you. Well, okay, I believe... Okay, I can't... I didn't see what that was. I, I don't know if it was a good thing. Um, we have to share air, water, and land affects us all. My heart feels good being a joyful vegan. Me too. Always, we need you. I need you. Um, what's going on? You can watch the rebroadcast because I'm about to close so I can go have some lunch and then get some more work done and be out in this beautiful day. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous day again. I can't tell you though, just want to send love. Okay, we need each other, of course, indeed. Thank you everybody for spreading the word. I, I appreciate it so much. So thanks for watching everybody. And um, I may even do a broadcast later on. I'm not really, I'm not sure. I've got some other things I want to say, but I need your help. So spread the word, share this with others, and let's get more people on um, these these scopes so that we can um, keep spreading the word. And uh, for any newbies, I hope you come back. Will the newbies come back? Will you tell me that you'll come back? Will you say, um, <laughs> I'll be back? I'd love to know if you're joining for the first time, if this is something that is um, helpful for you, that compels you to come, come back. That's what I want to know. Sure, I can do another Halloween podcast later. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you in a second, Tim, if you're still on. Are you still on, Tim? You'll come back. Um, Definitely be back. Oh, I'm so glad. Thanks, Fernanda. Are you the one who ordered the books before, Fernanda? I saw your um, your um, order come in. Um, love you, girl. Definitely be back. Thank you. I know, but you're here already. I've already seen you. <laughs> I know your name. Oh, thanks, Fernanda. We'll, work out your, we'll get your books out to you right away. Thank you so much for that. For those who want to order, I have um, signed copies of my books available for just another day and a half, and then I'm not going to be selling signed copies anymore. You can always get the books at Amazon. You can always get the books uh, at bookstores, but I'm not going to be selling signed copies anymore. That's what the last scope was about. Thanks, Fernanda. Yay. Yay. And I'm sorry, I was supposed to come on at noon, but then Amazon called me, and um, I had to talk to them about the process of getting the books over to them so I can stop being a book fulfiller because I'm not cut out for it. It's not what I want to do. Goodbye from New Zealand. Thanks for joining. Thanks everybody. I'll be back. Oh, wonderful. Thanks, Carolyn. And you want to win the contest. <laughs> Good. Um, yay. Okay, everybody. We'll have a wonderful day and I will see you later for the animals, for the animals, both human and non-human. This is Colleen Patrick Goudreau. Thanks for watching. And you can find everything at joyfulvegan.com. Adios. Adio. Adu. Adios. Adio. Ciao. Arrivederci. All of it. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye from Barcelona. Ciao. Okay. Bye. You're welcome. Thanks, Kesara. Kesara. Kesara, Sarah. Bye, guys. Thanks, Allie. Love to you. So sweet. So sweet. Look at all your hearts. Okay. Goodbye from Napa. Okay, you know, it's really hard for me to say goodbye when you're sending me your hearts. <laughs> okay.